In this video, we're going to be comparing all 12th gen CPUs from Intel and all Ryzen 5000 CPUs from AMD. So if you are a creator, then this video is for you. So I've spent the last six months benchmarking the Intel and AMD CPUs and trying to get as many samples as possible. Probably ran over 1000 benchmarks to get accurate data to actually see how do these line up to each other. So then, which one is better for you? Which one is the best bang for buck? Let's find out. Squarespace helps you to take your business to the next level by creating your own web presence. Perhaps finally you can launch that passion project you've been putting off for so long. Creating a website through Squarespace is as simple as playing with Legos. They've got tons of high quality custom templates that you can adjust to fit your style. Whether you want to sell your product online, take bookings or have a professional online portfolio, Squarespace websites give you the access to all the important analytics and SEO tools to make sure that your story reaches as many people as possible. If you still feel like you'd help with your website, Squarespace pride itself with 24-7 customer service. Learn more about Squarespace and their free trial in the description below. Go to squarespace.com forward slash tech notice to get a 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So then which CPUs are we comparing? I have eight 12th gen CPUs in the benchmarks and we have four AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs in the benchmark here. Now you might be saying yes, but there are actually more 12th gen CPUs and there are more Ryzen 5000 series CPUs and you are absolutely right. But at the same time, I don't think that those others that I haven't mentioned in this video aren't as popular and I don't think that many people are gonna go with and they're not so much different from like one of those variations over here. For example, you know, Ryzen 5600X or Ryzen 5600G, they're not that much different from each other. And also the Ryzen 5800, X 3D is really for gaming, not that much for creators, so we're gonna leave that on the side as well. So then from the 12th gen, I have the i5-12400, 12500, 12600K. Then we have i7-12700, i7-12700K, and then we have three i9s, i9-12900, 12900K, and 12900K. S. On the AMD side, we have the Ryzen 5 5600X, Ryzen 7 5800X, Ryzen 9 5900X, and Ryzen 9 5950X CPUs. Most of these benchmarks we're going to be looking at is the overall score. So if you do want to dive in a little bit deeper, how do each of these CPUs compare for your creative benchmarks, then I highly recommend you check out the individual reviews on this channel because we're not going to be comparing like the nitty gritty of this, but really seeing where do these all align up. Also, if you do want to check out the latest pricing of these, I'm going to leave the links in the description below where you can actually see and pick up any of these CPUs. And one last thing you might be saying is, look, there is a new CPU release just around the corner. Uh, like this, you know, kind of comparison is already out of date. Then I'd like to beg the differ just because the new generation is out there. That means that those prices for these CPUs are going to drop even further and they're going to be even more banged for buck compared to the new generation and so on. And a lot of people still can find these secondhand or so on. And even if the new generation is coming out you might want to know how well do the new generation compare to this generation so I still think this video is helpful especially for creators because I don't think there is any other video like this around on the web for creators. For AMD testing setup the motherboard is MSI X570S Ace Max because the motherboard is very high-end motherboard very good power delivery so we're not going to be capping the performance of the CPUs because of the low power delivery or you know low quality VRAMs or the power phases or something like that so that's why we're using that motherboard very good motherboard for uh, the Ryzen 5000 series. For RAM we're using two 32 gigabytes Kingston Fury Renegade RGB sticks that are running 3600 megahertz or mega transfers per second and CL18. The GPU is ASUS TUF RTX 1390 and for the cooler we're using ASUS Ryujin 360mm AIO which is basically the Acer Tech cooler and all of this system is on the open test bench. On the Intel side of things we're using the ASUS ProArt Z690 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. For RAM we're using four 16 gigabytes Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 RAM sticks with 4800 megahertz 
speed with CL38. The GPU is the same, Asus TUF RTX 1390, and for the cooler we're using Fantex Glacier 1 360mm cooler. But both of these coolers are actually Acer coolers, so they're basically the same cooler, just different brands, so the cooling performance of these, we can expect it to be very much the same. The Intel system is on the Fantex P600S case, but with open side panel and open top and front panel, which means that it's basically an open air case as well, just to keep both of these sides very, very similar in terms of performance and not capping anything else. The one thing you do see the difference is that the 12th gen is tested with DDR5 compared to the DDR4 on the Ryzen side. If you do want to check out any of those testing you know setups then i'll leave those in the description below especially the entel setup because that is actual build we did on the channel so if you want to build that system you know just check it out on the channel so first of all let's have a look at cinebench r23 the single core score so basically here we can see the rendering performance of a single core which also relates to the snappiness of computer performance so if you're doing just anything on the windows most of the things just on the windows opening programs closing programs and so on are single core performance or single threaded just applications which means that the higher the single core is the snappier kind of the the pc feels here and they kind of line up quite equally over here but what we can see is that even the lowest of the right uh, intel 12th gen i5 12400 is faster about three four percent than the ryzen 9 5950 x that just shows that the 12th gen you know single core performance is very 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 good and there's been a massive leap since the last generation but when looking at the multi-core performance for example cinebench r23 multi-core score we can see that the fastest one over here is the i9 12900 ks which is a ridiculous cpu and we're close to three thirty thousand score which is which is just absolutely ridiculous as well but the power consumption is very high on that one as well or the power draw when reaching those scores feel free to check out the review on the channel if you want to dive in deeper then the ryzen 9 5950x is just below the 12900 bear in mind this is not tested with the pbo enabled on the ryzen so all of the ryzen systems don't have pbo enabled if you do enable pbo then the ryzen 5950x actually does reach uh, 28000 or something like that but still the multi-core performance in terms of which one is best is the Intel system here. Interestingly, the Intel 12 core CPUs like the 12700K and 12700 are actually performing a little bit better than the 5900X, which actually has more threads, which just shows that the IPC for the Intel 12th gen is very, very good you know, in terms of the per core, um, you know, instructions per clock, which is very, very good. But moving on to Geekbench 5 multi-core performance, we're not seeing much difference compared to the Cinebench. So basically both of these systems or both of these tests really test the general computer kind of, you know, fastness, single and multi-core scores. They're very synthetic, but just, just helps us to kind of line these CPUs up, like where do these line up? And then we can actually see like, how do these perform in real world applications? So talking about real world applications moving on to blender 3.1 and we're looking at the monster scene benchmark over here and very interestingly even though we saw that the multi-core performance in cinebench and geekbench is much higher on the intel system the blender performance is actually much better on the ryzen systems over here as you can see the 5950x is still about 14 percent faster than the 12900 ks so if you are doing any 3d rendering work and you, you want just something really really good then the ryzen processes are actually performing much better in that application as you can see even the i7s are now lower than the ryzen 9 5900x which is 12 core so we're performing better over there but then at the same time the i5 12600k which is a 10 core cpu but 16 thread cpu is faster than the 5800x which is still 8 core CPU but 16 thread CPU. So on the higher end of CPUs, AMD is winning, but then on the lower end of CPUs, I think Intel is a better bang for your buck, basically. Moving on to Photoshop, and we're looking at the overall score here, and easily we can see that the Intel 12th gen, like the i7s and i9s are much better than the Ryzen 
CPUs over here and that's highly to do with like single core performance because that's very very important for Photoshop. As you can see the Ryzen 5950X is about 15% slower than the 12900KS which is quite a bit of a leap on the Intel side but even like the 12700K is about 5% faster than the 5950X and also a lot cheaper than the 5950X. Even the i5 12600K, very interestingly, is performing faster than the Ryzen 9 5900X and 5800X and so on. So I think for Photoshop, most likely you're gonna go with um, Intel system if Photoshop is the main program you're using in your workflow. Another photo editing application, Lightroom Classic, quite similar performance as Photoshop. The Intel systems or the Intel CPUs are much faster than the AMD Ryzen ones. The 50x is about 14% slower than the 12900KS and even about 4% slower than the i7 12700K. So if you're doing Lightroom as well, I highly recommend going with the Intel systems. On the lower end of things, uh, the interesting thing is like the i5 12600K, I think this is always like a very interesting performing CPU because it's not using a lot of power. It pulls around 125 watts or something like that, actually a little bit less even. And the 10 cores just perform so, so well. As you can see in here, even the Ryzen 9, the 12 core CPU, 5900X is slightly slower than the i5 12600K. And on the lower end of things like the i5 12500 and 12400 are like four or 5% faster than the Ryzen 5600 X. Moving on now to video editing and first of all Premiere Pro. We're looking at the extended overall score first and we can see that the Intel systems are dominating this here. Like even the 12600K, the i5 is faster than the 5950X. Now this is not in every single like aspect of the benchmark or of the application. I'd recommend go check out the individual reviews, but the overall score is faster. Like we, we can't deny that because it is just very good. And it's highly and mostly to do with the iGPUs inside the Intel CPUs. Now, if you don't know that already, the 12th gen has an iGPU inside the CPU as well, which isn't like basically very like powerful graphics card in there, but what is important in there are the media encoders inside the CPU that make a massive difference in video editing applications, especially if you're working with H.265 and 4 codecs. Like I would not go and get Ryzen for this system. The Intel is much better pick. I've made a complete other video about it and you might be saying, but I already have encoders on my GPU. Yes, but those on inside the Intel GPU are so much better and they can work together with the GPU as well. So go check out those videos. I'll leave them link below and on the channel if you don't know what I'm talking about. Even the i5-12400, which is a six core CPU, as you can see over here, is faster than the Ryzen 5900X. Now they're using the same GPU, same amount of RAM. The only difference is DDR5 RAM and just enabling the iGPU, that's it. Everything else is really the same. But as you can see, the 12400 performs better than the Ryzen 9 5900X. That's absolutely ridiculous. So the 12400 is a six core CPU and the Ryzen 9 5900X is a 12 core CPU. So half the amount of cores, but we're still performing better. That's how much the iGPU makes a difference. In terms of the standard overall score, very much the same as well, but the 12900KS is the best in here and is actually a little bit better than the 12900K. So you can see a few percent better there. So the 12900KS is actually like a little bit of a jump there. It's not just like a gimmick that, whoa, you know, just to get the best score. It is a good few percent better. If you want the best, the 12900KS is the best CPU there. Now I do want to mention the standard live playback speed here as well, which is probably the most important thing when talking about video editing, because if you don't want to do proxies and you want to just drop the footage on the timeline and want to see how well does like either of these CPUs or the systems playback the footage, then this is very important thing to look here. As you can see, the 12900KS is the top of the charts and all of the Intel kind of CPUs are on top of the charts. Like if we look at the, the lowest, the i5-12400, which is a six core CPU, is still about 5% better than the Ryzen 9 5950X with the same CPU. That just shows how 
much better is the Intel systems for video editing when using like timeline performance, especially mirrorless camera codecs when you're playing back any of those, the Intel system is much better at doing that which is just absolutely ridiculous to really see that and how much better the like 12900K or 12900KS are. They're about 30, 28% better than the 5950X. That's like a lot, a lot better. But then compared to like the 5900X, which is a 12 core CPU, the i9s are more than double or like twice as good really as this Ryzen 9 5900X. Just a thought, I'll pull this section of that benchmark out as well because that's very, very important to know. Moving on to After Effects. Very similarly, you can see that the i5s, i7s, the i9s from the Intel side are on top of the charts here. I guess the DDR5 makes a difference, but also the single core performance and After Effects is very important as well. Now, After Effects does support the multi-core um, rendering now as well and uh, like multi-core performance in the CPU. You, but still, I can see that the 12600K is better than the Ryzen 9 5950X, about 1.4%, 1.3% better, which is still a little bit better. So even in After Effects, I think the Intel CPUs make a bit of, uh, you know, more sense and you might even get better bang for your buck when going with Intel CPUs. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve and looking at the extended overall score here, the Ryzen's are doing quite well now here. The 5950X is still about 9% slower than the, you know, 12900KS and slightly slower than the 12900K, but still performing very good in terms of that, like much more competitive in this extended overall score than the, the Intel systems as well. Moving on to the standard overall score, interestingly here, the 5900X is a little bit better than the 5950X, which is just interesting performance, but still the i7s and i9s are faster than the, any of the Ryzen chips. Interestingly, I think like on all of these benchmarks that I'm mentioning is worth keeping an eye on the i5 12600K, because as you can see, it's so competitive with like the high and Ryzen's Ryzen 9s and it performs like right close there but is like much 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 more affordable in terms of the price of the CPU than the Ryzen 9s there. So video editing even on DaVinci Resolve I'd still go with the Intel CPUs especially if you're doing any like H.265 video editing. If H.265 is any of your video editing codecs then the uh, Intel systems are much better but I also want to mention that if you do um, get like the Intel CPUs I highly recommend unticking the using NVIDIA um, decoders to decode footage basically on the uh, DaVinci Resolve settings because I've found that the latest updates on DaVinci Resolve aren't so good at switching the encoders decoders from like NVIDIA encoders or NVIDIA like from the graphics cards to the iGPU so I just use the iGPU encoder because they're much better and they support more codecs than the actual NVIDIA encoders inside the NVIDIA GPUs. So looking now at the V-Ray, which is another like 3D and rendering application here, we can see again that the Ryzen systems are performing much better here. So as you can see, the 5950X is on top of the chart here and about 4, 3.1% faster than the 12900KS while consuming considerably less power. So if you want to get something that runs very, very cool and is very good at V-Ray, I would highly recommend Ryzen systems here as well. Look at the Ryzen 9 5900X as well here, performing quite a bit better than the uh, Intel 12 core CPUs. Look at the Ryzen 9 5900X here, which is a 12 core CPU performing considerably better than the like i7s or the 12 core CPUs from Intel side. So the Ryzen is a little bit better over here. Although I still find the i5 12600K being like a very good bank for buck in the kind of lower mid-range budget range where you can see that it's much better than the Ryzen um, 7 5800X, you get 10 cores and it's actually like very similar in terms of the power consumption than the Ryzen 7 5800X. Okay, benchmarks complete and one thing you might be asking is which one is the best bank for buck? I didn't put any of the prices on these CPUs because the prices and deals they're constantly constantly changing. If you have an eye on a certain CPU, you think, I think this is in my budget range, just highly recommend looking through all of my benchmarks here. You can see where it lines up, but then also go check out the links in my video description below because the links in my video description are smart links, which basically means if you find the i5 12600K, you click on it, it gives you an option of few different shops where you can buy the CPU and 
like locally looks at you as well depending like where you are especially in the us check out all the prices on all of these different shops because you, it might be cheaper in amazon or bnh or best buy or new egg or some other shop a drama somewhere like that basically latest pricing in the description below through those links you can find the latest pricing if you're asking me like what is the best cpu best bang for gpu and then best kind of uh, you know lower end uh, cpu then i would say if you're doing video photo editing and not so much 3d rendering if we're looking at the best cpu then it's the intel i9 12900 ks which is it is just the best at video and photo editing there's no doubt in that it is just absolutely ridiculously good if we are looking at the best bank for box kind of middle ground there of photo and video editing then i'd still go with i7 12700k if you can and if your budget allows that it is a little bit better and a little bit more expensive than the 12600k but performs much closer to the i9s than the i5s in terms of the kind of range of cpus there so you get like a lot of performance of the 12700k and it's very good at also 3d rendering because of the more core count there but then the 12600k i5 is just so good at the performance as well in the mid-range you have to look at the price difference between the i7 12700k and 12600k because they are they are just really good like middle ground kind of performance there uh, depending what your budget is they kind of scale very e like equally as well or very good so if you can afford i7 go i7 if you can the i5 is very good cpu as well for video and photo editing on the lower end of things the 12400 and 12500 are just really really good check out the pricing of those two if the 12500 is very close to the 12400 and you're doing a lot of video editing they highly recommend go 12500 because it has better encoders in the igpu but if the, uh, the 12500 is a lot more expensive, go with the 12400. You're going to have very, very good time video editing there as well. It's just an absolutely amazing, amazing um, CPU. Now, if you're looking at really the 3D rendering and doing a lot of 3D work, basically, uh, on the CPU, bear in mind, you have to consider like whether you're doing cpu or gpu rendering as well i assume you know you're a professional you know which one you're doing more most people use more gpu rendering so then at that point i'd still go with a 12th gen and maybe a higher end gpu of um the nvidia you know because you get so much more graphics and rendering power of the gpu but then the snappiness of the computer of the 12th gen because this the single core performance is much better on there but then if you do a lot of cpu rendering then the ryzen systems are better in v-ray and blender you can see that or any kind of multi-core performance rendering that you need the ryzen's perform much better especially if you're wanting to have something that consumes less power in those things then the ryzen is much better at uh, at that the 5900x and 59 and 50x 12 and 6 core cpus they're just ridiculously good at how little power they consume as well and no problem cooling them talking about cooling and power consumption the intels will run a little bit hotter and you might need to consider getting a little bit higher cooler but i think if you are going on the higher end like 12700k and 12900k you're probably in that budget range where you would get that cooler anyway and you don't need to worry about that just the characteristics of the cpu will be it will run you know in the 80s 90s possibly compared to the ryzen 9s which would run like maybe 70s and maybe low 80s so 10c probably um, like lower but at the same time the power consumption is a little bit overhyped issue because if you look at actually power consumption if you're worried about your electricity bill then the intel is a little bit of a better pick just because the um, idle temperatures or the idle power consumption of the intel because of the efficiency cost is so much lower like even the i9 1200 ks is consuming at idle less than 10 watts where the ryzen is really idling like sometimes even four times higher 20 30 40 watts depending what you're doing which is a lot higher and using a lot more power on the ryzen side so if you're looking at the overall like power consumption per day then intel actually uses less just the burst kind of power consumption is a little bit higher on intel and might result in a little bit warmer like kind of temps in there and a little bit louder but you can tune it down and it's not really an issue so overall concluding thoughts i think intel is a little bit of a better option or better performance in most of the cases although if you do do a lot of 3d then ryzen is that option there if you are 
wondering like oh which pc should i build and like which is the best bang for buck in my budget range i highly recommend checking out my different price range best bang for buck build i've got a one thousand dollar pc build fifteen hundred dollar pc build two and a half thousand dollar pc build and a five thousand dollar pc build which are meant for creators and all of those pc builds have like kind of upgrade and downgrade paths so you can really configure all of these pcs for your budget and you can get the best bang for buck for your systems Bear in mind, those actual prices or overall prices of those PCs have gone down because the GPU prices have gone down. So good news, if you are gonna go with those PC builds or if you wanna check them out on my channel, the overall price is actually much lower. It's a good time to build a PC, so go check those out. I know this has been long. Hopefully this video has been very helpful for you. If it is, likes and subs if you'd like to see more and we'll see you in the next one. By the way, very soon what's coming up is all the RTX 3000 series GPUs benchmarked for creators. If you wanna see that, go check it out on the channel. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.